So, hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about Google Cloud's next uh, in 2019, what was new, what was introduced in San Francisco during the event, and uh, what software did actually at that conference. So let me get started. Um, okay. So I will start by saying a few words about myself. My name is Alan Pershevsky. I am right now application architect, but mostly my uh, my engineering degree comes from development in Ruby, everything that's related to web development, APIs, and so on. Um, so I'm part of a five department, but at the same time, I'm, the, I'm also part of Center of Excellence and Solutions. So, okay, that's a few words about me. Oh, well. So that's why this presentation is in English and not in any other language, um, because I do believe this is the language that you'll understand. Okay, let's get started. Um, so a few words about how was it at Google Next and what software did actually there. So software had a large booth, I believe that there was like 30 or 40 people from SoftServe during the conference talking with potential customers, with developers. Uh, we had an amazing demo that was made with, uh, I believe it was Magic Leap uh, AR glasses. Um, and we have lots of people that were just coming to the booth talking and uh, just getting to know what SoftServe is about. The booth was large. Comparing to any other companies that was around, it was quite large. We were very close to Salesforce, Intel, and any other large companies. Um, the other thing is that on first day, we also had a party for potential customers, lots of people from Google came to talk with software about potential deals and other stuff. But that's not the only thing uh, that we did. Uh, first of all, we were announced to be partner of the year. Uh, so SoftServe, one of the four companies, were announced to be a partner of the year. But also our uh, team had, had, uh, um, had some presentations during Cloud Talks or, for example, Luslan Kusov uh, had a pre large presentation that you can actually watch on YouTube about infrastructure with deployment managers, so code as infrastructure, uh, infrastructure as a code, of course. Um, all right. Oh, and, yeah, that would be about SoftServe. Uh, but let's get to uh, talk about what actually Google did and what was announced during these two days, um, three days. Uh, so what was new in GCP? So here you'll see lots of icons. Uh, I'll just go one by one, quickly talk about them. Um, so let's... Let's get started. I will start with Antos. That's the next big thing that uh, that Google did. Basically, it's all about connecting um, cloud with hybrid solutions or multi-cloud environments. So having one simple solution uh, that uh, you can use to build software without thinking where software actually is being deployed. So it connects GKE on-prem, which is Google Kubernetes engine on-premise. Uh, with the Google Kubernetes engine in the cloud and doing deployments, doing the automation and lots of other stuff that you can do in GKE without even thinking if it's that on-premise or in the cloud. Um, so soon other cloud providers will be added. Right now only Google, of course, is, uh, is added to Antos, but it allows you basically to transform your IT and build apps today and for the future because um, we can quickly modernize the application, migrate. Um, you have automated policy and security, so everything gets in place, so there is nothing to be worried about. Uh, it's all being managed by Google. Uh, and you have one consistent experience for, for every developer, so you can quickly develop your application. Um, so what was also introduced in terms of, uh, of Antos, there is Antos Migrate, which is a tool that allows you to get the VM that you currently have uh, on-premise and convert that to the containerized version. So you, you have everything in containers and you can deploy it to Antos. Then you have also Antos config management. So it's one single place where you can in the declaratively way describe what, what, what you'd like to, to see about your configuration and then deploy it and it will be deployed across uh, on-premise and in the cloud. Of course, uh, another thing that was introduced and it's coming from the open source world. If you know, there is an Istio that's a service mesh, and Antos is using Istio to manage microservices. So you will manage connections between services inside this uh, uh, this Antos platform. Uh, GKE on-prem was introduced last year, but this year it's it's available as GA. And you both have unified monitoring and logging, and you can use GCP Marketplace and many. Everything that you would like to use in Google, now you can use also 
on-prem. The price is quite high, but it's clearly a message that this uh, solution is not for probably not for startups, but probably for enterprise companies. Uh, Google has not as big presence in enterprise world as Microsoft and Amazon have. So that's the next step for them to, to be a part of this enterprise journey to the cloud. Uh, One-year subscription uh, costs $10K a month, and you'll get 100 vCPU block per, for that amount of money. Of course, if you want to have more, you need to multiply it. Um, so about the architecture quickly. So it's all being managed by GKE Hub. So that's the centralized UI that is managing both uh, the on-prem and the uh, Google Cloud Platform section. And here you, in both places, you have the sync policy for config management, and as well as Cloud Service Mesh. So it's all being connected by Cloud Interconnect to connect services from GCP to on-prem. And then uh, applications or compute is being used uh, by Google Kubernetes Engine and on-prem um, by Google Kubernetes Engine on-premise. Plus, you are free to use GCP Marketplace, where you can install many apps uh, by simply clicking one button. So let's move on to things that we were most uh, let's say it was good for the developers. If you're a Kubernetes developer, now there is a way to, to use Kubernetes and write on Kubernetes in an easy way. So cloud code was added uh, as some kind of new um, ability to write, debug, and deploy Kubernetes application within your IDE. Um, so this basically brings the maximization of developer productivity because it's a, like set of tools that you could use to deploy your application, debug it, get logs, and so on. And it's really simple to use. I'll show you that in a minute. But it's a great thing. You can you can debug, you can uh, get logs, you can speed up your development. You can simplify local development. If you're using, for example, Minikube, um, you can just deploy it on Minikube and use that in, in your local cluster. Um, so I'll just quickly show you the demo. Let's let me go to um, an open Visual Studio. All right. Maybe not this one. I'll I'll just um, okay. Now we're good set. So I'll I already have installed here uh, the cloud code. What I'll do I'll simply create a new application. Um, let's say I want to use Node. A little simple Hello World application. Uh, it takes a while uh, to be generated in, in your on your computer, but it, it's in a second. It's available here. So you see here, I have Docker file, I have scaffold file, and I have uh, Kubernetes manifest. What I'll do here, um, I'll first of all I'll try to deploy it. Um, so if I'll deploy. I'll deploy to the cloud, so to the GKE. I have a cluster here. Uh, so I press deploy. Um, okay. That's the image that I want to use, and it will build the image uh, and deploy it uh, to, to Kubernetes cluster without even going to the UI. So, um, or using uh, kubectl or, or any tool. So, this will this is really nice. You can use it. So, we're going to wait a few seconds, but it will be available. Um, the other thing in, that's that's working, uh, that's fine. What we can do here in the scaffold, for example, they added the ability to uh, to some examples. So, for example, I, I can select like okay, scaffold Helm deployment example. I can take it and uh, and basically build from that scaffold um, the the next uh, deployment. Okay, I hope this will be ready. It's Okay, let's wait for the deployment to roll out. Uh, at the same time, I can go to uh, to the Kubernetes engine and see if the cluster is being okay. It's here, so that's my cluster. Let's go to the services. Okay, looks like it is working. So let's just wait a few more seconds to to get the IP addresses here. Of course, I can just use it here, but I just want to to do everything in that application. Okay. Same time, I'll I'll just open it here. Um, okay. okay, it was it was deployed. So right, that's my IP address. Um, so I can what I can do here is, for example, I would like to give you logs. So I'll just go and view logs uh, from my newest. Oh, 
I already deployed it before just to make sure that it's, it's working fine. Um, that's fine. So there we have a code that should be logged for the second one. 67, okay. And I will just refresh it and a few times and I'll get the logs once again. And we'll see that, okay, we received the request. But that's that's just the logs. Let's let's go and um, try to use debug. So I'll just go here to the debug section. I have right now the ability to debug on Kubernetes. So I'll just go here. I'll press debug on Kubernetes. It will spin up quickly the connection to to, to the GCP, and we are here. Okay, and then if I'll refresh it once again. All right, here I am. Uh, the debug is working, so I can view what's going on. Uh, if there's any problems, I can quickly investigate what's wrong, and it's all from that tool, which is which is awesome. All right, I'll just stop debugging, and let's get back to the presentation. All right, so we can do do more things here. If I'll go and open the welcome, um, you'll you'll see what you can do here. Currently, uh, Go, Node, Java, and Python are supported. These are uh, like languages that are supported across Google Cloud, not only for GKE. Um, but you have integrated debugging, log viewing, as I said. You already have a scaffold for applications if you want to build them. You have snippets, completions, and you can also create clusters not only in Google, but you can also create them in Amazon AKS or Azure AKS. Um, so yeah, that that was really short demo of that. Let's let's move on to the next thing, next big thing that was introduced, and this is really nice. If you ever work with Heroku or anything similar, it's really a game changer, I believe, because simply what, what you need to have in Cloud Run is HTTP container, um, and you can deploy it in Cloud Run and really really quickly, you know, like in within a few seconds. So uh, so what? Is uh, what is Cloud Run? So basically, it's a ability to run stateless HTTP containers on fully managed environment, or if you want, you can also run them on GKE cluster. Um, it's built on Knative, so it's also using open source tools. Uh, Google is showing that he is willingly uh, go with tools that are approved to be a part of, of CNC. Cloud Native Foundation, um, and they're using them to build fully managed uh, services. So it's very simple developer experience. You, if you have container, you just need to build that, and within a few seconds you can deploy it to production. I'll show you uh, that in a minute. You have already integrated monitoring and logging, and it's natively server less, so it's one experience. Whenever you, you want to, you can run it. It's also working with uh, Anthos because there you have GKE. And and you can let your developers deploy on that uh, really in, in a few seconds. Any language is supported, any library, any binary. So whatever you want, you can simply run it. If even if you don't have source code, if you don't, if you only have binary, you can sim simply run it, and and it's really cool. Um, so how will that fit in Google Compute World? If you already are familiar with Google Cloud, then you probably know that there are a few sections of the compute. Um, so we have Compute Engine, which is simply VMs. Uh, um, then we have Kubernetes engine, cloud functions, uh, which is simply serverless functions. Um, so you can um, you can deploy your portion of your code, and that will serve as, as a function. You have also App Engine, which is fully managed solution, but it will require you to do some tweaks in your code to uh, to go with that. Uh, but and there is also Cloud Run, uh, which is somewhere in the middle. So because it's not as managed as Kubernetes engine, of course you can deploy it on GKE, but it's it will be simplified experience. But it's not as um, you can customize more than an app engine. An app engine you're strict to go with certain path for right now it's it's being changed uh, second version of app engine is really uh, easy to to integrate with however cloud run is really simple way to deploy things um, of course Google loves to have diagrams so if you want to decide what solutions to use it's really simple if you have if you're using stateless HTTP if you and you don't need kubernetes and you have really custom languages custom go with Cloud Run, but if you if you want to use uh, standard uh, supported languages and you want just to deploy application and have really nice uh, way to deploy it, App Engine will will work fine. If you have events, then Cloud Functions. If you want to deploy simple function, then Cloud Run is too big 
like let's go with cloud functions again. And if you really want to customize some stuff on the Kubernetes or use external hardware, uh, you can use Cloudrun on GKE. Okay, what about, what about pricing and free tier? Uh, free tier gives you about uh, 180,000 vCPU seconds for free. You're being built only uh, between the first request that it's being executed, and if there are other requests, then when the last request is being done, then you're not being paid after that period. So you're only being paid for uh, for that time. Um, and it's really it's really nice if you're building even even medium application, it will fit for you. Um, if you'll extend that, then simply you'll pay, but not that much. It's really, really nice thing to, to do. Right now it's in beta. In future you'll also pay for the networking, but for now you're not paying for that. So this is also cool if you want to just simply test it. Um, so let's go and uh, take a look at the demo, a uh, really short one. So I do have CloudShell here open. I will do, I'll simply get the, uh, what I want to to do okay. Let's go to a Ruby. I just created a really small application that it's using some YouTube things. It's really like really uh, small application that will get some statistics from uh, from YouTube channels. And what I'll do, I'll just uh, I'll just deploy it right. Um, okay, so. Cloud build submit. It will it will build uh, for me the the container. So let's do it. Um, okay. At the same time, I'll I'll go to to the Cloud Run UI and you can do the same here. Of course, after after we build that using using this uh, command, uh, we can we can go here and build service. So I I can create a service from here. Um, it's really simple. I can select the container that I already have. I can go with GCP Ruby Demo. Um, for example, this one I deployed yesterday. I will continue with that. I'll do Ruby Demo. Um, let's call it like today it's in May 8, so I'll, I'll just do that. Um, right, I'll allow an annotate invocations because I want us to use it. You can customize things like maximum request per container and memory that's allocated. The application is really small, so this default options will, will work well for me. I'll just go and create. And okay. And after a few seconds, it will take a while to, uh, to be uh, deployed, but it's really fast in my opinion, uh, comparing to any other solutions. Now after after a few seconds we should we should see the application. Okay, here we are. We we have running applications. This will say only hello world or something like that. Um, okay, so let's go and grab something from YouTube. I'll just uh, this is the playlist from YouTube um, for the Google Cloud things, and I'll I'll just use that for my application. So YouTube, I'll just paste the code and I'll, I'll just say, okay, I want to see a CSV. Okay. If I'll do that here, uh, then probably it, it will not look well because I'll, I'm just returning CSV file that it's uh, based on tab. So I'll, I'll just probably go back to, to Cloud Shell. And I'll do curl. I'll get only like 10 first. And we can see that like the, this will basic the application was built to count the most used words in those videos. So you see the cloud is used, platform, keynote, business security manager, all the things that, uh, but that was simple application just to prove how, how easy it is to work. Um, so I'll just do something more um, because I showed you how to do that from the UI. I'll just do the same thing, uh, but from the uh, from the Google Cloud SDK, I'll just select, I want to deploy it on US Central 1. Um, okay, it will be deployed in a few seconds. Okay, I, I will allow unauthenticated invocations. And we'll wait. It will set that I am policy, routes, traffic, create revision, and should be ready in a second. Okay, health check. All right, it's done, and we have the application up and running. 
So this is really easy if you have uh, uh, already some Docker file with your application, and the only thing that is needed is the port. So the end environment variable port has to be set, and that's it. It will work fine, and you can quickly go to the cloud and, and use that. All right, let's get back and let's talk about things that you probably will be most interested in. Uh, the AI platform AutoML update. So uh, previously, I believe it was called ML Engine. Right now, Google tried to um, to get all services that that were built around ML and create a platform that will simplify things for data engineers. So this is really a platform to build, run, and manage ML projects. You have lots of things there. I'll show you in a minute how it, how it works. Uh, the one big announcement was AutoML tables and AutoML videos. AutoML tables is basically getting the data from CSV file or from BigQuery and can train models without even coding. And it can transform structured data into predictive insights. So basically, um, I'll show you that during the demo, but you'll get the table, and based on one parameter, you, you can you can build the ML model about, uh, around that. Uh, and automatic videos, you can classify your videos with custom labels. So let's say you'll upload thousands of videos, you'll label them, uh, and then the automatic video will basically take it and and uh, and try to classify them using your labels. Um, then automatic vision. Uh, there are all small additions to that, so bounding boxes to identify object locations. Previously, it was only available in Vision API, um, so but now it's also available for you if you're using AutoML Vision. AutoML NLP uh, now will support also domain-specific sentiment analysis. So, for example, if you're in IT industry or if you're really healthcare industry, um, and you'll teach how to, if you'll provide the labels for. Uh, for language, then you're able to build them on specific sentiment analysis, which is really, really nice. About uh, a platform, what it is, previously it was called ML Engine. So it's end-to-end -end ML dev cycle, so you're, you're able to ingest data by getting the... So it's simple solution that will serve you to, to work with your data. Uh, the AA Hub is a new thing that was introduced, so AA Hub is a place where you can get data from different providers and can also push uh, push data to a hub uh, to be public or only for your organizations, uh, but you can also use many other services like that you're familiar with already, like data prep, data flow, BigQuery. You can use data labeling service or um, or Kubeflow that is on premise and and many many more. Um, okay, but how AutoML tables will work? Basically, you have table input. You'll define data. Uh, define the schema and get the uh, feature that you want to build the model around. Analyze uh, input features, uh, then you'll train the model, um, evaluate it, and deploy. And you have already working API with that model deployed. And I'll show you in the seconds how how does that work. So let's get to demo. Um, I will not go through the whole cycle of of doing that because um, okay, let's go to tables. Right here are in tables. If I would like to create a new data set, I'll just create one. Uh, it will allow me to to get things from CSV, for example. I uh, so I can specify here that I would like to to get some from from CSV, um, and then I can I can build a model around that. But it will take a while to even import the data. Like I believe it was around 10 minutes. We do not have the time, so I'll go with with the things that will already. Uh, Already imported, so I already imported the data. I uh, already built the model around that. So first, you specify a schema. Here, we specify that we want to build, uh, like as our target will use uh, the deposit. Uh, so categorical variable type. Then I can go to analyze. Uh, in analyze, I can take a look uh, what are possible. Like this will visualize. My my data. So, for example, I can see. Okay, I have deposit, and uh, deposit is mostly correlated with the duration or with month. Uh, for example, I can take a look at job, and job is mostly uh, feature that is correlated to job is mostly education and housing and so on. So, you can see if the target that you selected is actually the, the proper target you want to train your model on. Then you can train the model. I already trained that because it took about two hours to, to train the model. Um, but after after it's trained, it will it will show you all statistic, accuracy, log loss, and so on. So here we have model around 91% uh, of accuracy. 
not bad. And I can also take a look at the full evaluation report, but I'll not do that. I'll go to evaluate section. This will give me more um, information about uh, about my trained model. Um, so it will present me some metrics, uh, confusion metrics, feature importance, and so on. Uh, but I can also go straightly and predict data uh, using that uh, deployed model. I already deployed the model, so I have online prediction. I have API that is ready, so the model was deployed. Model took about uh, 600 megabytes, I believe, rows. It was like 45,000 rows. So the model that was built, uh, it's also quite large, but and it took two hours to be deployed. But I can just take the request from here. Um, Add it. This is the like the request, like example request, and under the hood it will call this API. So project GCP location, like the mod, this model, and will use predict, and it will uh, it will predict for me uh, what should happen. So the prediction result is one. So th this is like the confidence score is one. Um, so the deposit should be should be one. I just I just did really. I haven't looked it to in it the schema. It was really a quick way to to show you how easy it is, and without even thinking and even about uh, writing any any line of code. Right? Let's get back. That was for AutoML tables. Uh, what about new AI solutions? Last year, uh, you if you saw next uh, keynote from the last year, you probably saw that it's contact center AI. Uh, they were showing that eBay. Um, like call center and how how Google is helping with doing that with uh, dialogue flow and other things. Uh, now it's available in beta, so if you have customers that would like to use it, they are able to use it. Uh, but also new things were added, the recommendations. AI uh, is there, so based on the customer choices, the AI API will provide you with the possible recommendations and the same with document understanding AI. So basically what it will it it allows you to get documents or get uh, the images and so on and classify those documents. So without uh, doing manual work, you can you can do document classifications. Um, smart data integrations and uh, cloud data fusion was also introduced. This is also a nice tool that allows you to do whatever you want with your data without coding. Um, so it's it's built on CDAP. Uh, it's an also open source project. Um, so it's native data integration service that really helps you to, to build and manage easily the data pipelines. Um, so it has integrations with multiple connection transformators and it's open sourced so you can you can also add yours and I'll I'll just show you how does that look like. Okay. So right, let's let's just go to um, to data fusion directly from here. So it, it has nice UI. I already have the instance ready for me. Um, so okay, I'll just go to the studio to show you how it may look like if you want to connect some data around. Um, okay, here we are. So let's say I, I have a FTP file and uh, let's say I, I do want to do something from uh, from Google Cloud. So this is it, and then what I can do now, okay, in FTP, let's say I keeping the XML file, so I'll just do XML multiparser. In file, uh, let's say it will, it will be, I'll just uh, parse the JSON, and in cloud storage, maybe let's change cloud storage to database. Maybe that will be a uh, better example. In the same database, we have data, but the fields are not in the format that I would like to uh, to be, so I'll just use value mapper. And then I can use uh, the next section, so I, I can join it. Um, so I'll just connect these together. Right, I'll join the data. Of course, I'm I'm not configuring everything. I'm just showing you the, the DUI. So I encourage you to to take a look what you can do here. You can provide your some informations and and really uh, take like preview it, run it, and see how it works. And then you can schedule it to be executed. And you can you can also configure it to be executed on on given time and so on. So this is really really nice. Uh, so we do have joiner, and after joiner, let's say want to deduplicate. 
uh, some rows because maybe there's some duplications. And then I can use sync to to basically send that data to, for example, I want all data to eventually be a part of BigQuery. And that's it. And you build that without even coding. And then after that is built, you can uh, add uh, additional things. So, for example, jar library like Spark program that you can you can just use to, to take the data and so on. So this is this is really uh, really nice about Cloud Fusion. There are other tools uh, that I had some issues with running. For example, Wrangler was not working for me at least yesterday. Uh, but this uh, this is the new. Uh, the new way, like fully managed code-free data integration at any scale. This is how Google is saying about that, and it's really smart integration. So uh, you just take these connectors together, do that, and you're you're good to go. And and it's super nice for people that are not really familiar with how to code stuff, but are really familiar with how to deal with data, or data expert, or any. So it's it's really nice, and it's also show you that uh, again, open source tool is being used here. To build that uh, in in Google Cloud, All right? Let's move to BigQuery uh, BI Engine. Um, so, what is going on here in, in BI Engine? It's basically allows you to to do some visualizations in real time. If you're using Tableau or or other software. Uh, this will be. This is right now available in, in Data Studio. Soon there will be new uh, integrations with additional things. So, uh, like Tableau, like any other BI tools that that you may use, uh, it's really nice way to accelerate data expression analysis. You just so if you at the data, if you look at the keynote from the second day, you'll see a really nice example how they solved the issue with the shipment packages that with some delays by simply looking at the data and trying to resolve that by looking just what's going on and how to resolve it. So you can build dashboards and so on. Um, so that's really, really nice thing. I'll just show you how, how it works in the query uh, BI engine. I already have here the report. Um, so okay, what I can do here, I I'll create a time series. But uh, before I do that, uh, I just want to create new data source. It will be the same. So in BigQuery, I created already the um, the table that I would like to use. I'll go. This is my project. Uh, this is from some VI Engine tutorial. I'll just use that. I'll use that to connect. And here I am. Uh, I'll I I can take a look what's in my schema. I'll say okay, let's add it to the report. Um, and let's support it. And I do have some things here, so I can uh, draw this. And let's add uh, some bar chart. And let's say I want to build that around category. That will be my dimension. And based on neighborhood. Right? Oh, it looks like there's lots of nulls, so I can I can add a filter and. Uh, I can get the neighborhood filter, so it will. If I'll, I'll take, open this filter, it'll, it'll basically show you that it will exclude everything that is null. So that's fine. I'll use it. Okay. What else? Uh, let's add also the pie chart. Uh, so it'll show me how many cases were closed and open. This will basically show you how many active vandalism were in San Francisco uh, for the last 10 years, I believe. Um, so so you'll see that there are open cases, closed cases, most are, are open. And, and you can quickly build that visualizations, and I can also um, add some scorecards. So how many uh, records do do we have, and so on. And then I can view it, and, uh, and I, can, I can see the data. It's all being taken from BigQuery. Um, and if I'll go to BigQuery, uh, I'll see that there's a query history that just happened. So what kind of queries were made, and what was the cost for them, and and so on and so on. So this is really nice. About BI Engine, how does that work? Uh, so simply, you need to do reservations, so, and you'll pay for that. So if I'll create reservation, uh, I'll have to name it. I have to select where I would like to store it, and uh, and I specify a gigabyte of capacity I'd like to use. You'll pay thirty dollars around thirty dollars per month. Uh, to use that, and, and you can use that BI engine to visualize your data. Okay, that would be for BigQuery BI engine demo, and let's take a look at the pre-trained ML API update. Uh, I already told you about ML, AutoML updates, so uh, also Google has the APIs that allows you to 
uh, to use their models. So, for example, Cloud Translation V3 API was introduced. If you're using Google Translate, it's using the same engine. Uh, in this API, you can select model to fit your needs. For example, you uh, you can select that, oh, I would like to get things from uh, about music, or I would like to read about technical stuff. And you can select model, and it will be better, because you know that some words in some contexts means different things. About Cloud Vision API, most updates for the whole uh, whole section of this pre-trained ML API updates is about uploading batch uh, uh, batch videos, batch photos, and for example, for video intelligence, now we can also get OCR from videos or get uh, get video intelligence, so get labels for the video that it's streaming, so it's live, and it's really cool uh, that you can use that, for example, to monitor if the life that is going on has everything appropriate, and if not, then you can quickly shut down the live uh, live uh, live view. This is really nice. Uh, the other thing that was added, and it was to uh, cloud NLP. So, for example, uh, natural language API demo is now supporting Russian and uh, and Japanese. So, for example, I just took a song, Usamovara Yai Mayamasha, and you can take a look like this is okay. Well, I have. Uh, uh, Samovara, which it's a consumer good. I, I have uh, Droge, which is a location. I have Okno, which is something else. And I can also get the part of the speeches. So I can see, okay, it's a noun, it's a pronoun, and, and so on. And it's all based on the Russian language. This is really cool. And it's also support Japanese. We're still waiting for support for Polish. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but it's really nice, nice to see that there are some changes here. And uh, Yet there are no sentiment. They cannot get uh, insights about the text that you pasted, um, about if it's good or bad, if something is writing, for example, bad review or good review. But I do believe soon it will be it will be ready because right now the whole thing in, in, with NLP in Russian it's uh, it's in beta for now. Right. The next big thing is uh, it's most related to G Suite, not to GCP, but it allows you to insert uh, rows from the Google uh, from the Google Cloud BigQuery. Uh, so again, you can work with the data without writing, writing SQL queries, because if you really want to work with BigQuery, you need to know how to build SQL queries. Um, but here you can simply import them, and it's working well, and it supports up to 10 billion rows without writing uh, this query. Uh, I do not have a demo because it's still, you, you have to sign up for the closed uh, testing, uh, but I do have a gift that I found over the internet. So you do select the project because once you get the data, someone has to pay for getting this data from the system. Uh, here they select the uh, Asia Analytics um, and simply they'll just import them. They'll be added into the data sheet, and it can now work with the data as they're just part of your of your sheet. So you have columns. You can select which columns you'd like to filter on. You have you can create pivot table. You can uh, write some functions and many many other stuff. This is really nice. This is a uh, game changer for data analysts that do not know how to code and how to write as queries. Other updates, so like we're approaching oh, the end. It looks like faster than I thought, but that's fine. Um, so first thing is that App Engine now is supporting Ruby um, and Java uh, in alpha. So it's not really yet production ready, of course, but at least Ruby is a seeing some presence. After last year, uh, AWS, we also saw some updates for Ruby serverless. Now we see that an app engine is also supporting Ruby and Java, which is great. We can quickly prototype things. Uh, and also, uh, as a GA, Node.js 10, Go 1.11, uh, and PHP 7.2 is also announced as a part of app engine second generation. Uh, as well, changes for Cloud Functions. Now we have Node.js 8, Python 3.7, and Go, uh, and Node.js 10 in beta, and Java 8 and Go 1.12 in alpha. This is great. Last year, they announced that they have uh, Go as ability to write Cloud Functions. Now they're adding uh, newer versions of that. 
the bigger announcement was that the Cloud SQL now supports Postgres 11, which is great because currently uh, 9.6 was used, uh, and soon will support a Microsoft SQL Server. And this is uh, also something that is really great if you're working with Windows applications or .NET applications and you still have uh, SQL Server. During the keynote, they presented the way to, to quickly get the data from SQL Server to your uh, environment in GCP and it, it's, it's working really great. For now it's also closed testing so you cannot uh, create the MS SQL Server instance but it soon will be available. Uh, Multi-region replication is now uh, G8 in big tables so you can you can use that to uh, to improve uh, availability of your data. Uh, cloud storage will have soon the new class. If you remember there was four class uh, in in GCP cloud storage. Now the older class will be added if you really want to keep your data in long term, because previously there was two class two archive classes. Uh, uh, first one that was if you're getting data like once per month, then once per year, and this will be for really long term data retention if you want to just get data probably once per uh, per two years, three years, and and that that's enough nice thing to lower the cost. Uh, and also a great thing is that new bucket policy only was added to IAM, uh, which means that you can give uh, permissions to uh, one single uh, and give policies to one single uh, bucket. And this is really, really nice. Uh, the other thing is that Dataflow SQL can be used to build Dataflow pipelines using SQL queries. If I'll go to BigQuery, um, I can select here in Query Settings. And there will be an option to, to change the engine. Uh, for now, it's not available yet here. Uh, it will be option to, to change the uh, from BigQuery to, to Dataflow SQL. So now you can build Dataflow pipelines simply by using SQL queries. Uh, the other thing is flexible resource scheduling. So it's like in Compute Engine, there was something that was called preemptible VMs. So basically, there the was VMs that uh, could be like uh, terminated at any given time, uh, but and you paid, I believe, 80% less. Um, and now a similar thing is coming to data flow. So basically, if you allow that you you not have really time critical um, pipelines, then you can move them to preemptible res uh, resource pricing, and thanks to that, you'll you'll pay less. And this is really nice uh, because. Uh, because you can save money. Uh, other thing that was nice, especially for administrators of GCP access approval. Um, so this will, if you, for example, would like to create a new a new cluster and you don't have permissions, you can ask for approval and then administrator can let you do that. And, um, and this is really nice. So you can, uh, there is no need to, to ask every time someone to give you access to something by changing your policies, it's simply by clicking access approval, and if someone will agree, then it will it will be approved with one single click. This is this is really nice. Cloud Security Command Center is now generally available, so you can see some insights about your security things in uh, uh, in GCP. Uh, what's going on? If there are any DDoS attacks and anything like that, you will see that in one place. And also, other thing is DLP UI now allows you to perform DLP scans uh, of your data. Uh, so you'll see the, if, if there is any anything that you should be worried about in terms of uh, data loss protection. Okay, and many, many more. Uh, if you go to blogs or to YouTube channels or to some podcasts, you'll see lots of uh, uh, announcements that, that were there. So I'll, I have created a short list of what you could do. If, if you'll go simply here, you'll see that it was like more than 100 announcements from Google Next. Uh, the other thing that I have not discussed but are really cool if you're working with hybrid cloud, it's like 100 gigabytes cloud interconnect or traffic director that allows you to, uh, to, to work with your network and prepare some advanced routing. Um, that's really, really cool features that were added. Uh, many improvements to, to data proc, uh, auto scaling, to auto ML. So many, many more, and yeah, we do not have time to talk about all of that, but you can quickly go to the links and you'll be able to see uh, what's going on. Um, 
which is cool. Um, right. Uh, any other thing, I recommend you to go to that playlist and especially look for like opening keynotes, developer keynote, or if you're interested in, um, for example, the presentation that Rusan did, this is also nice. Uh, so you, you'll find it here. There's, I believe, it's 500 videos, so you'll find something for you, and I do recommend that because that's the great uh, source uh, and of knowledge. And thanks, thanks to that, basically, even if you are not going to any conference like that, you're able to get the knowledge that people are getting from that conference, so which is really cool. Uh, I do recommend you always the GCP podcasts uh, if you want to read more, if you want to hear more about it during your. Uh, uh, um, everyday commuting, uh, this is really nice. They prepared free episodes for Google Cloud, and it worked well, really well. Uh, and also one article from the, the week in Google uh, Cloud Platform where you can see uh, big announcements and all informations that you really want to know what what happened during that week. Okay, that would be it. Thank you. If you have any questions, I hope I'll be able to answer them. So here we go. All right. Um, so I hope I hope you you're happy with that. We finished, I believe, almost on time, a um, few minutes before. Uh, but I will I will add the slides to to the blog uh, on on our community, and I do hope you enjoy it. And yeah, 